people, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at the Creative Blur Gallery. So today we're going to look at blurring, and in within Photoshop CC we have some filters that uh, are fairly new um, in the Blur Gallery. And the one we're going to look at today is the Feel Blur. Now I've used this a few times and I found it uh, quite useful, uh, not only for creative uh, reasons, but also to help us with shooting portraits where depth of field can sometimes be uh, a bit of an issue. Now what I mean by that, um, I shoot a lot of my headshots, when I do headshots, uh, in a very similar way, L mostly backlit, and I normally have the lens wide open. Now, um, I'm shooting on a 70 to 2, um, sorry, a 28, 24, get it right, 24 to 70 L-series Canon lens, which is a very, very sharp lens, and a very fast lens, and when you shoot it at f2.8 uh, and you focus on the eyes, everything goes very, very nicely out of focus uh, from um, the eyes backwards, and also up to the nose as well. The only problem is you have to be very careful because as you focus up, if your subject moves slightly or you move, you can get quite a few um, out of focus images. So there's a fine line there. Now what I sometimes do to combat that is I'll, I will stop the lens down slightly, maybe to f4 or 4.5, which doesn't give me that lovely um, out of focus feel, the bokeh uh, at f2.8 that f2.8 does, but at least I'll get more sharper images images. Now, to counteract that, we can blur the image in post. It's not going to be exactly the same feel as done in camera, but we can help it along a little bit, and, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so this is the image we're going to be working on. This guy is called Alper. Um, I shot him in Turkey uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I take a, a regular trip out there to uh, farm business, and uh, I've actually photographed him before. Uh, he was, he's actually a, a deckhand on a boat, and we sometimes have a little bit of a trip out. And uh, last time I photographed him, he was actually dressed as a belly dancer, of all things. So I've done this really nice portrait here of him. Uh, the lighting was is shaded light at the back of the boat. Um, obviously, the sun light in Turkey, in, even in September, is very, very harsh. Not great for portraits. So by bringing into the, him into the shade and allowing the background to bleach out, we've got this beautiful, nice, flattering light. Now, as I said, I've gone in with, a, uh, with the lens set at 70mm, or thereabouts, and I've focused on the eyes. And the eyes are lovely and sharp. Uh, I don't know if you can see how well you can see on the video. And we've got this nice, uh, soft focus around the neck and the shoulder, and so forth. But sometimes, as I said, uh, we, I have to, I don't have to, but sometimes I'll stop down the lens a little bit, because... The tiniest movement, as I said, can cause a lot of images to go out of focus. And I got fed up of having to throw a lot of images away. So this is where I've stopped the lens down. But what we're going to do, we're going to actually use this blur gallery um, and, uh, and add some blurring to this image and uh, show you how that's done. So we've got the image here. It's a smart object. I'm going to duplicate that. Command or Control J to duplicate. Now this is, this is already a smart object. If it wasn't a smart object, I would right click and convert to smart object. But we don't need to do that. Uh, the reason we do that, it gives us a bit of flexibility. Now we go to Filter and we go to Blur Gallery. And for this image, we're going to use the Field Blur. That will now open up, and you get these little pins, like this one. Now, the pins, uh, you control the uh, amount of focus or defocusing of the image. Now, I normally start off, I want to make sure that my eyes stay sharp. It By default, it adds a 15 pixel blur, as you can see up here. What we're going to do is drop that back down to zero. I'm then going to click again, and you'll see we've got a little uh, a, a pin uh, icon on screen. I'm going to put another one over the other eye, and again, go up here, and I'm going to drop that again to zero. That enables us to make sure that there's no blurring in those two images. Uh, eyes, sorry. We can now start to add some more, more pins on the image. Um, we'll start off down the bottom here, and I'm going to increase this one, and you'll see the image will start to get more and more out of focus now. We're going to increase this one to about 30, I think. I'm then going to add another one this side. And again, increase that one probably to about 25 on that side. So uh, it's already quite out of focus. Um, 
up here on the top there by the hat. Let's go up to about 26 there. And maybe the same on that side. No, what as you're doing is you want to be kind of, you know, just be thinking how the camera goes out of focus. So, generally, things further away from camera generally get a bit more blurred. But you need to balance it out because, like, in reality, this pen should have more out of focus. But it's already fairly out of focus from the actual lens aperture. So, you want to balance it up and make sure it kind of all fits together quite nicely. Now, I'm just going to click OK for now. There is a few other options here. And uh, you can actually add uh, some bokeh so that you get sort of the, uh, the the lighter areas of the image uh, bleed out uh, a bit different from the rest of it. I don't generally bother with that. You can see it on the hat up here. Um, it generally looks like a dog's dinner when I do it. So I don't generally worry about that too much. But if you want to experiment, you can put a little bit of that in. Um, and the, also you can change the bokeh colour as well. Um, there is also an option here to add noise, a grain image. When we apply a blur into to an image, it's a good idea to add some grain back into the image so it looks a bit more natural. I'm not going to do that here. Um, I would prefer to do that separately within Photoshop as opposed to within the uh, field blur gallery. So we're just going to click OK. And now that should open up here in Photoshop. So there's before. There's after, and I don't know how much you're going to see of that, but you can certainly see it around the hat here. Now, what you've got to watch out for as well is transitions. Okay, so if you've got an area that's really blurred and an area that goes sharp, like here, it can look unnatural. So what we can do is go back in, like so, and we can add another pin, maybe there and there, where the transition are. Now... This one at the top here was 26 pixels. This one's 26 as well. So I would just add enough blur in so it's not quite as blurred, um, but it's, it gives you something in between. So you've got a nice kind of fall off and it's not so abrupt. Like I said, you don't want the transition to suddenly go from soft to sharp. So that adds a little bit there. If you're worried, if if you start the blurring starts to encroach on other areas that you want to keep sharp, maybe like the eyebrows, what we can do here is add another pin and just make sure that that has got less blurring there. It just protects them a little bit, somewhere around like that. So it's natural a nat natural progression from blurring to soft. Um, you could add a few more here around the chin if you wanted to. Um, let's try. Let's try one down here a little bit. Again, you know, this is going to affect the mouth as well here. As you can see. So we don't want to go too far. Um, in fact, we can pull this down maybe a little bit more down this way. That's quite nice. About seven pixels. And I will add another one over his mouth area. And just drop it down to maybe two pixels or three pixels, like so. So again, it's not an abrupt transition. Click OK. And we'll have a look what that looks like. There's before, there's after. So that's quite subtle, especially around the chin here. But it's just enough, just take the edge off. Let's have a look at the top end, where we've added a bit more blur. So you can see that makes a big difference. And all this is just not only for effect, but it also accentuates the focus onto Alpha's eyes, which is the um, the main thing we want to be focused on in a portrait, uh, normally anyway. Um, we could go back in now. I'm just going to add a bit more blurring over here by the, by the ear. About nine pixels should do it. Let's bring that over a little bit. Something like that. Let's just increase it. That's good. Click OK. And then you can see why I've, I've created a smart object. Just makes things a little bit easier going backwards and forwards. There's before. There's after. So that's nice and subtle. We don't appear to have any sharp transitions, which is, the, like I said, the main thing you need to watch out for. So just zoom out a little bit. 
I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but there's before, there's after. You can certainly see the effect on the hat. And that looks looking rather nice. So we can carry on tweaking that as much as you want, but just watch those transitions. Uh, next thing we're going to do is to add some noise to the image. So I've just uh, renamed this layer Blur, so we know what it's all about. To add the noise, it's very simple. We go up here and add new layer. We're going to call this one Noise. We're going to put the mode into either Overlay or Soft Light. Let's go to Overlay. And we want to tick this box which says Fill with Overlay Neutral Color 50% Gray. Okay, that's very important. Click OK. We're then going to right click and convert this to a smart object like so then go to filter and to noise add noise and we're simply going to pick out a figure remember we could this is a smart object so we can come back and tweak it somewhere between one and a half two and a half normal is a sweet spot but uh, you'll need to just uh, have a bit of trial and error on this one let's go for uh, maybe two and a half 2.58 somewhere around there uh, uniform or Gaussian I normally go for Gaussian monochromatic but again you know you have a little play not a lot of difference click OK okay so now we should if we look at the image you may be able to see is before here's after before after you can see that noise coming through now especially on the ear there um, when we blur stuff obviously we're, we're basically obliterating the detail and the noise just gives us something for the viewer to uh, kind of um, to to attach onto a little bit of texture uh, back into the image the other thing we can do um, is go to filter blur Gaussian blur we can make this noise a little bit more film like if you want to by adding a little bit of blurring just around half a pixel that just takes the edge off that uh, noise and makes it a little bit more film like as opposed to digital which sometimes I quite like so uh, there we have it there's before there's after you need to uh, zoom in a little bit to see that but it just adds that little bit of texture back into the image which really helps uh, sell it. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this very short video. Um, go in, uh, go and have an experiment with the Blur Gallery. It's great fun. You can also combine things like Field Blur that we've done today with the Tilt Shift, uh, especially if you've got a Smart Object layer. You can have a little bit of a play around by combining those two things. But do remember to watch those transitions. Until the next time, thanks for watching.